Here we're going to do hypothesis testing of one population for the mean, but we're going to use the p-value approach to hypothesis testing. Now again, the first step we have to do is identify the given values in symbolic form. But the question says, test the claim that the average body temperature of healthy adults is 98.6 degrees Fahrenheit and a 0.62 degrees Fahrenheit standard deviation. A sample of 106 people found their average body temperature to be 97.2 degrees Fahrenheit. And we're going to use a 0.01 level of significance. We'll use the p-value approach to hypothesis testing for this example. In step number one, we're going to identify the given values in symbolic form. So reading the question, we find that the average population of all healthy adults is 98.6 degrees Fahrenheit. So that's mu is equal to 98.6 degrees Fahrenheit. Mu is the population average. And we read along and we see a 0.62 degree Fahrenheit standard deviation of all those healthy uh, adults. So that would be sigma is 0.62 degrees Fahrenheit. We read along and we see a sample of 106 people, so that is N, is 106, found that their average body temperature to be 97.2 degrees Fahrenheit, which is X bar. X bar is the average of the sample, 97.2 degrees Fahrenheit. We're going to use a 0.01 level of significance, which is alpha equals 0.01. And we're, we've identified all of the values given to us in symbolic form. In step number two, we're going to identify the claim and remember, the claim says that the average body temperature of healthy adults is 98.6 degrees Fahrenheit. So the claim is that mu is equal to 98.6 degrees Fahrenheit. Remember that the null hypothesis must contain equality. And since we can't change the claim of what it says, and it does contain equality, we can then put that in the null hypothesis. Otherwise, we would have to put it in the alternative. The alternative is just the opposite. So when we have not equals, we see the opposite is not equals. So mu not equal to 98.6 degrees Fahrenheit is the alternative. We have to calculate our test statistic and by our formulas in for step number three, we know sigma is known, so we're going to use a z-score, and we're going to take x-bar minus mu, and divide that all by sigma over the square root of m. And that's from our formula, no cards. We can fill in all of those values. We'll take 97.2, which is x-bar. Mu is 98.6, because we always assume that the null hypothesis is true to start, so we can take it from there. And sigma is 0 0.62, and n is 106. Calculating that all out, we'll simplify down and get to negative 23.25. So our test statistic is negative a z-score of negative 23.25. In our next step, we, step number four, we have to determine if this is a one or a two-tailed test. And that is determined from the alternative hypothesis. It's a two-tailed test because there's not equal in the alternative, which means then it's greater than or less than. So it's a two-tailed test. So there's two sides that we would shade in. So it's two two-tailed test. Now we have to, using the p-value approach, we have to determine what the p-value is. So we have to place in our test statistic. Our test statistic is negative 23.25. That would be off to the left here. So we would place our test statistic on our distribution. And then we use our test statistic to find the area related to that one side. Now in order to find that, we have to use our z-tables, because we're using a z-test statistic, 
So we have to use our z tables to look up the value of ne negative 23.25 and find the probability of being less than that value. So if we use our z tables, we'll find uh, 3.50 or negative 3.50 and lower, and we'll see a value of 0 0.0001. That's from our z tables because we have to use the z score because we know the z score. We're trying to find what the area is, so we read off the area. Now, this is a two sided test, so this is a symmetric distribution, so the area over here is also 0 0.00. Zero, 01. Now with a two-sided test and finding the p-value, we always have to add both of the sides together. In a one-tailed test, you don't have to do that. So the p-value is equal to 0 0.0001 or plus 0 0.0001, which is 0 0.0002. So our p-value is .0002. In the next step, we have to find the rejection region, and it's determined by our level of significance. So we have to look at our p-value of .002 and determine if that is greater than or less than or equal to our level of significance alpha. In this case, our p-value is less than our level of significance because our p-value is 0 0.0002 which is less than 0 0.01. So if our p-value is less than our level of significance, we're going to reject the null hypothesis. In the last step, we would make our final conclusion and say again to reject our null hypothesis and say there, well, we have to determine is there or is there not sufficient evidence. Well, remember, we are rejecting our null hypothesis, and that is where our claim lied. So in essence, since we're rejecting our null hypothesis, we are rejecting our claim. We're not supporting our claim. So there is not sufficient evidence. the alpha level of 0 0.01 uh, to suggest and then we have to suggest we, that the claim, just restate the claim that the average body temperature of healthy adults is 98.6 degrees Fahrenheit. So the traditional hypothesis testing and the p-value approach are pretty much identical. They're, the first three steps are the same. We veer off at step number four. On step number five, we come back to make the same conclusion. And step number six, we make the same conclusion. It is two different methods to solve a, any problem. The p-value test is, or p-value approach to hypothesis testing is easier to do with uh, z-test statistics, or the z-distribution. Much more difficult to do with a t or a chi-squared distribution, as we'll learn later.